Joining us now, Joe DeGeneva, of course, partner DeGeneva and Tensing, former U.S. attorney in D.C., uh, and now we find the left is bringing in the Mueller investigation that Brett Kavanaugh is simply going to, I guess, give President Trump immunity from any you know, investigation or any indictment, et cetera, et cetera. Joe, it's great to talk to you. How are you doing? I am doing great, Laura, and so is the country. I think so, too. I think it was, it's a great <laughs> night for the Constitution, great night for the rule of law. Uh, and yeah. and I think uh, I, I think the fact that the left is now talking about the Mueller investigation shows that they're basically they know it's over on this uh, nomination resistance. Yes. And um, I was uh, honored enough yesterday to get a call from the president about 845 in the morning. We had a lengthy, lengthy chat about many things. And I congratulated him on the process uh, that he had adopted by naming all of these people ahead of time in his presidential campaign. It was one of the great political maneuvers in the history of presidential politics, putting something so central to our republic and our constitution on the line in an election. It was downright intellectual, but nothing that the left would ever recognize as such a sophisticated move. I think uh, Kavanaugh is a fabulous choice. He is unassailable legally. And from the structural standpoint of jurisprudence, uh, just just a spectacular choice. The left and the Democrats have nothing but anger and uh, smear. Uh, they are going to do that. And in the course of doing so, they are going to hurt the republic, hurt democracy. But happily, they're going to hurt themselves more than anything else. Well, the left is now citing this 2009 Minnesota Law Review article where Kavanaugh writes, I believe it is vital that the president be able to focus on his never-ending tasks with as few distractions as possible. The country wants the president to be one of us who bears the same responsibilities of citizenship that all share, but I believe that the president should be excused from some of the burdens of ordinary citizenship while serving in office. He was arguing in the law review then. He then asserted that the indictment and trial of a sitting president, moreover, would cripple the federal government, rendering it unable to function with credibility. Uh, and they're citing this as, well, this is kind of Trump's get out of jail free card. And he saw he probably someone brought this to his attention and Donald Trump said, oh, we got to go with this guy then. because I mean, this is how steeped in conspiracy theories the left uh, happens to be today. Yeah, well, this is the silliness that the left and the Democratic Party will have to resort to because they have nothing else. All uh, uh, Judge Kavanaugh was doing was reflecting the scholarship of uh, the last 50 years on the question of whether or not a president can be indicted, whether or not a president can be subpoenaed, et cetera, et cetera, and making the point, which actually the D.C. Circuit made, in the Mike Espy case, when they ruled that a president is, generally speaking, not available to give testimony, especially in proceedings where he is merely a witness rather than something else. And that, of course, holds true in the current situation with Mr. Mueller, whose investigation now has gone on too long, is clearly illegitimate and is now showing signs of major unethical and perhaps illegal conduct by Mr. Weissman and others prior to the time that Mr. Mueller was appointed. So I think if the Democrats want to argue that, let them have at it. Uh, Joe, let's get into that a little bit. There was a piece, um, and we'll get back to the Supreme Court in, ish, in a moment, but there was a piece um, that was written yesterday or the day before, I think it was Daily Caller, about how Weissman, who's one of the real pit bulls who work works for Mueller. Uh, Weissman's a, a, a dedicated Democrat. Uh, and he, You know he hates Trump. Uh, but he was meeting with reporters to explain the Manafort case. Is that unusual, given your experience as a prosecutor, uh, to sit down with reporters and brief them? Yes. Yes. Not, not only is it unusual, it's unethical. It should lead to his firing uh, he is still on the Department of Justice payroll. Remember, he used to be Bob Mueller's general counsel yep. over at the FBI. Uh, Andrew Weissman, not to put too fine a point on it, is a sleazeball. And the fact that Bob Mueller tolerates his presence on his team uh, embarrasses me, uh, knowing Bob as I do. I think Bob has lost it. I think he stayed too long at the fair. He obviously has no control over this investigation. And if he does, 
shame on him. Uh, what, what Wiseman did was, uh, in April of 2017, he and FBI and DOJ lawyers met with four Associated Press reporters. And what did they do? They shared information with one another about Manafort, including having the AP reporters give to the FBI and Mr. Weissman the code for the lock on Mr. Manafort's storage locker, a code which the people had gotten, uh, the AP reporters, somehow without the consent of Mr. Manafort. This is so disgusting and so inconsistent with DOJ policy I cannot understand why Mr. Rosenstein and the Attorney General and Chris Ray have not objected strenuously to Mueller. Now, maybe they have, and we don't know about it. I doubt that very much, given the obnoxious performance of Ray and Rosenstein last week before the Congress. So let's just put it this way. The illegal leaking and probably sharing of grand jury information with the AP reporters and vice versa is grounds for firing. I just don't know when this is going to end. And, and if, if Rosenstein doesn't get off his duff, and believe me, he's purposely not doing anything about any of this, then I think the president should remove him when the Mueller thing is over. He Sessions, was there. of course, yeah. is he, incompetent. Sessions is incompetent, and he's useless to anybody at this point, including the president. Rosenstein was there last night at the White House. He was sitting um, to the left of, sure. of where the president was standing. Uh, and... You know, he he's, he always looks a little sheepish to me when he's appearing in in at White House uh, events. But I was, I don't know, I was, yep. I got to know why I was surprised to see him there. But it's like, oh, there's there's Rosenstein. Uh, mm-hmm. I have to ask you another another. This is another thing that's really like, I find this so upsetting that Paul Manafort is being held. And again, I don't, I know Paul Manafort a little bit. Like I knew him during the campaign a little bit. So this is nothing about a personal connection with him. But the fact that he's being held in solitary confinement for 23 hours a day when he's when he's also has to defend himself and meet with lawyers. And what's what's that all about, Joe? Well, allegedly, this is his for his protection. But if he can be placed in a minimum security situation and be be held without bond, he can be put at home. I I just I want to know what Judge Ellis is going to do about this. Now, he's you know, he's the harumpher who made all these sounds about, you know, what, what's your power, you know, who gave you this, what's this memo, this extension memo, supplemental, which he got to see in its entirety. So presumably he was satisfied with the authority, allegedly, that uh, Rod Rosenstein had to extend to Mueller. Now, this, this lockup, which Amy uh, Jackson is the one responsible for Obama. him being locked up. Obama, that's, Judge. That's the, yeah, that's the D.C. case. Now, I just want to say this for all your listeners. There is a special place in hell for judges who defer to prosecutors unrelentingly and do not ask proper questions. There is no reason in the world for Paul Manafort to be held under these circumstances, no matter what he has done. This is an in terrorum use of the judicial and investigative process to force people to do things. Mr. Mueller, Mr. Wiseman, Judge Jackson, everybody involved in this should be ashamed of themselves. This is a disgrace. There, I cannot believe that not a whimper from anybody in the civil, civil liberties community about the way that, that uh, Manafort is being treated. This, this will be a black mark oh. on the Department of Justice and the people who work for it forever. Yeah, I mean, Joe, the fact that, again... He he was sent to jail back on June fifteenth, and he he's asked the appeals court to release him so he can prepare for his case, which starts in Virginia. Of course, the Virginia case starts in a few weeks. How yep. difficult is it to prepare a complex white collar criminal defense when you're in solitary confinement for twenty three hours a day? How difficult is the it, lawyer's job? It is impossible. You cannot do it when you have a complex case, because when you have a case like this, which involves tens of thousands of documents, hundreds of witnesses, overseas bank accounts, et cetera, et cetera, you have to be able to sit down with your client, go over documents, get explanations. This takes weeks, perhaps months of preparation. 
you're not allowed to bring certain things into a into a jail or a prison. You can't properly prepare. There's no way it can be done. So, I, I mean, the government and the judge are setting the groundwork for uh, motions to dismiss, for appeals, et cetera, et cetera. But let's also just get down to the nub of this. Paul Manafort cannot get a fair trial in the District of Columbia. We now know from the Scooter Libby case and the interviews with jurors after the case that as two thirds of the jurors on the Scooter Libby that hated the president of the United States, hated Dick Cheney, wanted to know why Cheney was not in the dock along with Scooter Libby. There is no way a Republican gets a fair trial in a politically charged case like this in the District of Columbia. I, I, I'm just going to tell you something. I've never talked about this with the president of the United States. I don't think this is the only time that Paul Manafort is ever going to spend in jail. Believe me. Uh, Paul uh, Manafort, again, uh, for everybody who follows this case, uh, his trial will begin at the end of July in Virginia. Judge Ellis is the j- senior judge overseeing that trial, but he's being held in Virginia um, yep. uh, pending pending that trial. And uh, the D.C. judge, Amy Jackson, is the one who said he abused trust and witness tampering. So, and then, but then another lawyer says, "Well, he's being kept there for his safety." Uh, well, why is 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 he in a medium security? I mean, why is he in this type of place anyway? It's not someone who's like rape someone. Like rapists don't get twenty three hours in solitary confinement. Murderers don't get twenty three hours in solitary confinement. It, it, it shows you how the presence of a special counsel or an independent counsel who is not properly controlled by the Department of Justice, which Mueller is not. He's an old buddy of Rod Rosenstein. These people are all friends. Comey, Rosenstein, Mueller, you name it, Chris Ray. This is the most this is this is such a despicable display of coziness and the abuse of prosecutorial power. Every one of these people should be ashamed of themselves. And that includes everybody who's currently at the senior levels of the Justice Department. That's embarrassing. With the exception of the solicitor general. Right. It's a fraternity of frauds. Uh, That's what it is. Yeah, fraternity of frauds. Uh, this is uh, Rick Santorum getting back to the SCOTUS pick. This was Rick Santorum last night on CNN about Kavanaugh. Donald Trump said he was going to energize the base with this pick. I don't think he did that. Uh, I think the a lot of the folks in the base were, really were sort of torn, turned off to Brett Kavanaugh. I mean, he's you know he's uh, he is from Washington. He's he's uh, he is the establishment pick. He is the Bush pick. Uh, he is someone. I mean, just you know, his father was a judge. His mother was a judge. He was. A, I mean, it's it's just it just seems like you know Trump in this case just bowed to the elite in Washington, and I think that's going to rub a lot of people the wrong way. It's not a yeah, let's go get him kind of moment for Trump. Reaction to Santorum. Well, I have to confess, I have never liked Rick Santorum. I had an incident with him when he was United States senator, which forever uh, scarred me with regard to him. He is an arrogant, self-centered, pompous, sanctimonious ass. And what he said last night is just plain stupid. Well, I thought it was very unfair uh, and it's yeah, just I don't know. It's I, like when you go on CNN or MSNBC, you, you become oh. some. I, I didn't get that at all. He's a pod person now because he's been on CNN for too long. He, <laughs> it's kind of melded into his skin. I, I just that kind of comment is so self-important. I mean, it's just who the hell does he think he is? No. The people, the the base. Oh, for heaven's sakes! Yeah, well, the base. The base spoke in the 2016 election, and they elected Donald Trump, knowing that Brett Kavanaugh was at the top with of that the list. list. And so I think the base, the, the base spoke. Yeah. Uh, Joe yep. DeGeneva, Joe DeGeneva, it's always great to have you on. Hopefully I'll have you on TV this week uh, here on The Laura Ingram Show.